Hi, I'm Ambrose Lin and I'm a prosthetic technician in NUH. Come follow me to my clinic. What do you do as a prosthetic technician? When we talk about prosthesis or artificial hand, many of us will straight away think of the kind Captain Hook has, which will look something like this. So this is what we call a functional prosthesis for patients who have lost their forearm. This requires the patient to move their bodies in a certain way in order to grab things. But this is not what I do. What I do as a prosthetic technician is to create customized lifelike silicone prosthesis for the digits, the hand, the lower arm, like this. Many of our patients are very conscious about their missing digits and will try to hide them in their pockets, bags, or try to cover them with gloves and bandages. These lifelike processes that we fabricate will help restore their body image and rebuild their self-confidence. They also aid in passive hand functions by restoring the length of the amputated digit to allow for typing, holding a phone, using a chopsticks, etc. That's interesting. How does a consultation with a patient go? During the first consultation, we will assess the area that remains after an amputation, or what we refer to as a stump. We will then recommend the appropriate type of prosthesis for the patient. We will also show them photos of past fitted cases and sample processes that will best fit them. Next, we manage their expectation by explaining the limitation of the prosthesis. Even though we try our best to match the colours of the processes with their actual skin tone, we are, after all, using synthetic paints. The colours of the processes may still differ from the real skin tone, which is very dynamic. Our skin tone looks very different under different light sources and different hand positions. And needless to say, sun tanning also causes difference in colours. What is an average work month like for you? I take about 1-2 to two weeks to fabricate a finger prosthesis and about 3 weeks for an entire arm. I will see each patient at least three times. The first time will be to collect the mold. The second time for a colour matching. And finally, the third time to fit and for the patient to collect their prosthesis. I have clinics refer visit patients twice a month and use the remaining days to fabricate their prosthesis. My mentor, Ms. Celia and I, also work on improving our fabrication processes by experimenting on different silicone, resin materials and creating acrylic nails. You mean the fabrication of the prosthesis is not outsourced to other companies? That's a common misconception that a lot of our patients have. They think that we outsource the production of our prosthesis. However, every step of the fabrication is actually done in-house in NUH. Wow, I didn't know that. So what is the process of creating a finger prosthesis like? First, I take the mold off the finger opposite of the amputated one. Come, follow me to the lab. Now, I will pour the resin into the mold. While the resin is too soft, I shape it till it matches the orientation of the amputated finger. Then, a silicone mixture is poured onto the resin mold, which is rotated using this machine till it is evenly coated. Next, I pour in a translucent silicone mixture into this then pour it out in order to get an outer layer. This outer layer will match the patient's skin tone. Silicone is stain-proof and stains such as pen inks can be easily washed off with soap and warm water. I'm creating the processes in layers and this fabrication technique is jointly developed by NUH and NUS. Wow, this is like creating a customised art piece. Yes, I think you can say it that way. To me, the most difficult part about this job is matching the pink colours with the patient's actual skin tone to give it a lifelike appearance and texture. Even among people of the same race, there are slight differences between them. So we need to custom match the colours with each patient. We try to match to 80% of the skin, vein and nail colours under three different lightings. For each patient, this colour matching process will take up to one hour. Finally, I will sandwich the touch-up coloration with an opaque silicone mixture. This multi-layer technique may mix the stratification of the human skin giving our prosthesis a realistic looking appearance. Since you are so good with colour matching, you must have an arts background? Actually, I do not have any arts background. But during my job interview, I was given a test of colour matching clear silicone to a test sample. I found it very fun when each colour addition brings me closer to the sample colour. I guess I have a bit of flair in colour matching since I managed to pass the test and got this job. Is this feel very niche? Yes. 
it is quite a niche field and we believe NUH Prosthetic Clinic is the only one in the region to fabricate lifelike prosthesis and we have patients flying in from countries as far as the UAE, Saudi Arabia for our services. What kind of patients do you see? Majority of our patients are workers in industrial accidents, retirees or housewives in domestic mishaps. Their amputations are due to crush or degloving injuries. One patient who left a deep impression with me was a young man who lost several fingers and an entire leg in an accident. He was on constant stream of painkillers as the pain was unbearable. I remember him to be depressed and traumatized during his first visit. But with each visit, leading to the completion of his prosthesis, he became livelier, which I could tell from his voice and attitude. He was very happy when he received his prosthesis. Oh, let me introduce you to my mentor, Mr. Liao. He's right next door. Hi, Mr. Liao. I would say a lot of hand holding in the initial three to four years, uh, doing each and every case together closely. After he had learned the ropes, I took on a more hands off approach and let him take greater ownership of each prosthesis that he makes. I will still come in to affirm the right and point out the wrongs. The aim is to teach him every trick of the trade. Mr. Liao, so what are the important traits that a prosthetic should have? Being a good listener is important in our line of work. We have patients who request for prosthesis to use for more heavy duty work, in which case we will add additional layers to increase the durability and lifespan. And if the patient tells us he had just come back tan from a beach holiday, we will go for a vero shade when color matching his prosthesis. So listening to the needs of our patients allows us to really know what the patient wants. I would also say that one has to enjoy creating and building stuff, have a good artistic sense, and that means have an eye for detail, a good sense of color and proportions, and last but not least, a healthy perfectionist trait. Thanks Mr. Lau. And now I have one last question for everyone. What would you like to say to a person who has lost limbs or fingers? I would like to tell my patients that you have the power to overcome this trauma and your self-worth is not tied to your physical appearance. However, if you need some assistance to rebuild your confidence, we are here to help.